Excellent! Hey everyone and welcome to Paul's Hardware. This is my monthly builds video for March 2016. I do this video every month. Well, not this video, but a new video like this every month because choosing parts for a new PC can be confusing sometimes. So each month I create a couple, couple computer build parts lists. Uh, these are both based on your votes and your feedback and I also build them sometimes too. So uh, if you guys want to check it out, I have my builds playlist linked down in the description so you can check out uh, fabulous builds that I've done in the past like my my parents' new system, and a few other builds that I've done recently. Uh, apart from that, I am also streaming this live to Twitch, so hello and welcome anyone who's watching this live on Twitch. I appreciate you guys being here. Um, apart from that, this uh, is this does involve some interaction. I should also remember how to speak. That's part of doing this. Uh, interaction, which is via a straw poll, and that straw poll is uh, linked in the description down below if you're watching this on YouTube. And uh, the straw poll for last month for my March builds was uh, which of these five systems do you guys want to see? And you all voted on the $1,500 reasonably epic gaming system. So uh, that's kind of what I'm going to be doing. I'm actually going to be doing two $1,500 reasonably epic gaming systems. Uh, if you guys want to vote for next month's, because I will be doing this again next month, and I will post this in chat for you guys if you want to vote right now. Get, get, a, get a head start on everyone else. Um, I have a VR build, a NAS build, a video editing build, full gaming setup including system monitor and peripherals for $1,000, or what I'm calling the potential PC, uh, which is a very uh, low budget system but with a, a lot of upgrade potential, so maybe that could be fun too. Um, what else am I forgetting to say? Uh, today, again, I'm going to be doing the $1,500 reasonably epic gaming system. I'm going to do it two different ways. The first way is going to be based on the mainstream Skylake LGA 1151 platform, and then the second way is going to be based on the enthusiast Haswell E LGA 2011-3 platform. Both of these are Intel platforms. Sorry to any of you AMD fans out there. Uh, it's just getting to be that point where I have a really hard time recommending AMD. I did an 8350 build last month, and that was my last ever AM3 Plus platform build. Uh, if you're looking to AMD, I highly recommend holding off and waiting until their next generation platform launches sometime this year, AM4 and all that good stuff. So a few more notes before we dive in first. Uh, one is that the cost I'm listing here is just for the system. That doesn't include monitor or peripherals or Windows, for example, although you can get Windows for 20 bucks, as I've recently mentioned over on kingwin.net. Uh, I'm also going to be using PC Part Picker for this because it's a fabulous website where you can use compatibility filters to narrow down all of your choices and get everything lined up. Um, if you guys check it out, I have a saved parts list as well for all of the old builds going back from March, February. Don't go back too far because they tend to get a little bit out of date. Um, but let's kick it off. Actually, no, I, I said it backwards, but we're going to actually start off with the 5820 build. Um, and the 5820 build, I think, is a very reasonable one. So again, both of these are $1,500. Both of them share some, some remarkable similarities in their, for instance, their storage configuration and their memory configuration, but the 5820K build is more CPU powerful and a little bit less GPU powerful, although both of these are still going to make excellent gaming systems. Here you can see all the parts as listed. You even get Star Wars Battlefront, right, uh, when you get that R9 Fury, because there are people still playing that game. Uh, anyway, uh, this one's coming in at just under $1,500. And uh, let's just get started right into it with the uh, CPU, which is the 5820K. This one's actually very similar to my entry-level X99 system, but I'm glad to say that since a few months have passed since I did that build, uh, this one is, uh, well, it's more powerful, and it's about the same amount of money. So starting with the 5820K, which is super awesome, and uh, I don't know what else to say about it. That's the CPU you should get if you're jumping in here. It's available on Super Biz or Super Buys or whatever that is for $377 which isn't too bad. That's actually uh, just about the same price as the 6700K. Also, if you hear rumbling in the background, it's a train. I can do nothing about it. It's all right. Uh, for coolers, since these CPUs don't come with coolers, the, the high-end in Intel enthusiast ones, I've got the new Cooler Master uh, Hyper 212X. This one's, it's like the Hyper 212 Evo, but there's an X on the end, which makes it much better. Um, primarily, the difference here is the fan that's included, which is no longer a, sort of a I didn't like the see-through fan they had before. This one's a little bit nicer, I think. And they have uh, upgraded the bo the base of it a little bit with the copper contacts. Um, anyway, it's 40 bucks as opposed to 30 to 25 that you can get the Hyper 212 uh, Evo for, but you know, it's new. And I think you do get a little bit more value with the fan that's included here. It is much better uh, PWM. I'm, I'm sorry, much, much better static pressure performance. For motherboard, we're going with the MSI X99A Raider. Um, this is a budget 
X99 board, and this is definitely where you're going to have to spend more money if you're going with the X99 platform, is all the motherboards, they kind of start off at like 170 to 180, and that's for the budget end. Whereas with Z170, which we're going to be talking about in a minute, you're going to have to pay a bit more for that. So um, I like the X99 Raider because, um, I don't know, it's got a decent amount of... of uh, of features for it. It's got, you know, all eight DIMM slots, so you can start out with a four DIMM configuration for memory, and then you can add four more in the future if you want to. It's got that kind of brown PCB, which isn't quite as nice as some of the black PCBs, but, you know, it gets the job done. Uh, and then apart from that, you might notice that some of the reviews here were, I was looking at this as I was choosing this board, and some of them were kind of like so-so. Most of these complaints were about enabling XMP and the memory performance. Memory performance is often highly dependent on your CPU, just in case you guys didn't know. So if you try to enable X, like XMP for a 3000 speed memory kit and like it doesn't work, don't blame your motherboard, blame your CPU. That's an overclock memory speed and um, you know, that's not to say motherboards can't have like, you know, defective memory channels or anything like that, but just something to keep in mind. Anyway, this is uh, available for $190 at Newegg, but uh, I believe there's some other places that have it cheaper. So yeah, Amazon has it for $188 out of the, at, right out of the box. Or if you go to Outlet PC, you can get it for $190 and then minus a $20 mail-in rebate. I usually don't include mail-in rebates in my PC part picker lists, um, but they are there and available for people who want them. Uh, but, yeah, featured sellers, get out of there. Okay, next up is memory. I basically used the PC part picker filters to narrow down a 16 gig memory kit, 4x4 gigs, I didn't go with super fast memory because it's really not going to make that much of a difference. And I chose this Team Elite kit because it's pretty much all black. with kind of like a little bit of gold on there, I guess. It's a little blingy. It's also low profile. I appreciate low profile memory kits because they're going to give you better future compatibility with uh, CPU coolers and that kind of thing. For storage, I have a single 480 gig uh, SSD. I was going to try to add in uh, some, some like a 2 terabyte hard drive here as well, but I did not do that, uh, mainly because I... I ran out of money, <laughs> but uh, 480 gig for an SSD is pretty good to start off with. Also, there is an M.2 slot on this motherboard, but I didn't go with that one um, because those are more expensive. But I feel like starting off with a 480 gig drive like this is going to give you plenty of space for an operating system and some games and stuff. Drop in an old mechanical hard drive or something like that to give yourself some additional storage if you need it, and then maybe consider upgrading to an M.2 card in the future. All right, this one uh, for the graphics card, I went with the Sapphire R9 Fury. The R9 Fury is like a Fury X, but it's air-cooled um, and still pretty awesome. This one's from Sapphire. This one has very good reviews. Um, what's up, Sapphire Ed, if you're watching? I doubt you are, but hey. Uh, it looks pretty nice, too. It also has that kind of subtle uh, black look with maybe just a little bit of kind of copper or, or, or gold colors on it, which I think will kind of blend them with the rest of this. And you can now get a Fury for five, a little over $500 if you're in the U.S., which is super nice. Lastly, well, no, not lastly, but uh, rounding out the rest of the parts, we have the NZXT H440. I figured if um, every single case that uh, was in Kyle's recent, uh, what's, what's Kyle's new bit that he's doing? Uh, booted. In Kyle's booted season one, every single case that, uh, that was in the finals was built in an, in an H440. So this is a very well-respected case from NZXT. It's 100 bucks. Um, it's got it's got all the room you could need. It's got all the features you could need. You might need to remove a hard drive tray to fit in that longer graphics card, and that's about it. Finally, for the power supply, I've really been liking EVGA power supplies because they just seem to have the feature set that most I most look for, which is I want a highly rated one, so I want 80 plus gold or better. Uh, I want it to have a decent amount of power. This is a 750 watts, and I want the cables to be all black so we don't have any of the ketchup and mustard garbage and that is what EVGA has been doing with theirs. They also have these flat uh, ribbon cables which I find are pretty convenient for cable management. So there you go. There's the power supply and there, ah, ah, there's, there's our first build. What do you guys think? $1,500 reasonably epic gaming system. I like the $1,500 price point for uh, for computer builds, especially for a gaming build or like a gaming slash workstation. Because even though, like if you're younger and you don't have an, an, as much money or, or, or you know, you're just trying to, to get into building your own PC, it's difficult to say I'm gonna drop 1500. But if you, you know, if you can save up that much uh, or just kind of hit that, that price point, you can really get yourself into the upper tiers of uh, what's available, especially when it comes to GPUs and CPUs. And um, you will get a lot more lifespan, I think, out of your out of a build if you're spending this much. All right, let's move on to the second build, which is right here. 
Also a $1,500 build, and this time I went with the other platform, which is uh, Intel's most recent Skylake uh, LGA 1151 is the socket. Uh, the There's a bunch of chipsets, but the one we're going to be using here is Z170 since we have a 6700K. And for this one, you have more GPU horsepower with a 980 Ti, which will outperform the Fury um, depend in, in, in most situations right now. Okay, um, if you can see all the parts right here, you might notice I actually came in just a little bit over one thousand five hundred and fourteen dollars. So this is this is just a little bit, a little bit too much. Uh, not too much. It's just a little bit over. But the reason for that is because I was originally actually putting this together with the sixty six hundred K. So if you want to cut one hundred and thirty to one hundred and forty dollars off of the price of this build, get a sixty six hundred K. But when I came up with everything and I was about at about fourteen hundred, I was like, well, I think the best next, the best thing to do beyond this, like to get more power practically, um, is to jump up to the 6700K, and it's not as overpriced as it was a few months ago. It's down to about 375, 360, depending where you get it. NCIX US has it for 362, um, although apparently it's out of stock, but whatever. Outlet PC has it for 375 though, cool. Um, but yeah, still pretty expensive. Also, I'm hungry. It's lunchtime. But anyway, I wanted to pair that up with a nice CPU cooler, and um, as much as I'm a big fan of the Hyper 212, the Evo, and the, 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 the Hyper 212X that Cooler Master just came out with, I'm like, I want to find some other alternatives for that. So this is the Fantex PHTC12DX underscore BK, <laughs> which is just brilliantly named. Um, but anyway, don't buy this at Newegg because it's 70 bucks. Buy it at uh, NCAX. It's 50 bucks there. So about $10 more than the Hyper 212X. And uh, it looks a lot cooler. It's got a black, you know, anodized finish on there. Comes with two fans instead of one. Uh, and according to reviews and all, it's very quiet and it does a very good job at, uh, you know, keep keeping your CPU nice and cool. So there you go, Fantex Cooler, which they need to come up with a better name for, and that will keep your uh, 6700K nice and chilly. For your motherboard, we got the ASUS Z170A. Uh, I was looking at some MSI Crate Editions because this, uh, after I chose that cooler, I was like, this is going to be a black and white build. Um, the MSI Crate Edition is nice, but uh, I like the Z170A from ASUS just a little bit better. ASUS, they make some damn good motherboards, and uh, I think this one is no exception. Uh, it also has some features like USB Type-C and USB 3.1, uh, which I definitely appreciate. Oh, I also have the Newegg page for this so I can show you up more up close. It's even got a PCI slot because backwards compatibility, right? Um, but yeah, other than that, it's got that nice uh, black and white finish that uh, ASUS has come out with, kind of like the X99 Deluxe that's in the uh, Arctic Panther back there. And uh, to pair that up with some nice color matching memory, I have some Kingston HyperX Fury 16 gig kit. So I have the same amount of memory in both of these builds, 16 gigs. Got the same amount of storage as well. Um, with uh, about 480 gigs. This is the ADATA Premier SP550. I keep using this because when I keep going to the PC part picker list and I, and I drill down stuff and I'm looking at storage, the ADATA Premier SP550 comes up in the like lowest price by five or 10 bucks compared to a lot of the comparable options. And again, it's not the fastest of the fast when it comes to um, your SSDs that are out there, but it will do a very good job. Next is a graphics card in here. I was very happy to be able to drop in a 980 Ti. This is a nice 980 Ti as well. It's from Gigabyte, the 980 Ti Windforce 3X, which you can get for 600 bucks right now at Amazon. Um, by the way, if you're not in the US and you're on PC Part Picker, you can use this drop down in the top right to access other, other uh, locations for different pricing and stuff. And I'm sorry that stuff is inexpensive in the US. We've paid for it with our manufacturing. Anyway, um, I'm getting sidetracked. Amazon has this video card for $600, which is about 50, 60 bucks cheaper than the list price. And it's a very nice card. It's got the 3X cooler on it, stays nice and chilly. And uh, you'd probably be able to get a pretty nice overclock out of that as well. Um, again, this will outperform that Fury in uh, by and large most situations, uh, which is why you're gonna get more uh, GPU power with this build, you'll get more CPU power with the other build. All right. For a case, I just went with the Fractal uh, Define S, a reasonably, reasonably, pri reasonably priced case that looks pretty nice. Uh, and it's got that window on the side so you can see your beautiful black and white themed build. And uh, that's another reason why I chose this case was because I already have black and white parts and Fractal kind of has that black and white thing locked down. So nice little case. I've talked about it before. Finally, we have the power supply, which is the EVGA 650 watt 
80 plus gold certified. This is the same exact power supply, 650 GQ, as I showed you guys in the first build. I just, uh, I, I didn't want to be too much over, so I cut it down to 650 watts, which is still perfectly fine um, for this system. As long as you don't add a second graphics card, then uh, you're totally good with 650 watts and a 980 Ti. And again, this has those nice all black cables, which are just super beautiful and will blend in nicely with your build. So when you're looking at it through that window on the Define S, you will be able to see everything and it will be pretty. But um, that is all for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching it. If you're interested in links to any of the stuff I've been talking about here, again, that's all available down in the uh, video description down below on YouTube. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button while you're down there. And you can also check out my store at store.paulsharper.net where you can pick up shirts and mugs and pint glasses and all that good stuff. It's a great way to support me. Lastly, subscribe if you're not already uh, for more tech videos coming very soon. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Thirsty.